All right. This next video tutorial has to do with the introduction to perspective. Uh, this one is going to be concerned with one-point perspective. There are different forms of linear perspective, uh, one-point perspective, two-point perspective, and three-point perspective. Uh, they all have different types of uses, and there's also a multi-point perspective where I combine some of those. But we're going to be concerned with one-point perspective here. In one-point perspective, uh, we're going to be concerned with drawing certain shapes and making them into actual forms. They're going to go from flat shapes to forms, and it deals with a particular viewpoint. In order to demonstrate what I mean, uh, I'm going to lay out on my paper a horizon line. What's above the horizon line is sky. What's below the horizon line is the earth. Uh, you can also equate the horizon line with eye level. And on this line, if we have that established, I'm going to put a dot somewhere on this line. Uh, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to put the dot in the middle. And I'll also label it V1 just so you don't get confused with some other dots I may end up drawing. So once we have this set up, we can start now drawing a particular shape. In this case, it's going to be a, a square or a rectangle. And I'll put it here below the horizon line. Uh, the size of it is kind of relevant. But what I am doing is I'm putting it below the horizon line and not at all below V1. So I'm not going to have it directly below V1. I'll move it off to the side some. So I'm going to move it over. And I'll draw this shape using my straight edge. The straight edge is absolutely helpful to have. So I have my horizon line, my vanishing point, and my, my simple shape. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to label those corners A, B, C, and D. And I now have to decide which corners are going to be connecting to V1. I want you to think of this as an elaborate game of connect the dots combined with follow the leader. If I try to figure out if A goes to V1, nothing is blocking that path between A and V1. So I'm going to draw that line over to V1 carefully and lightly with my pencil. Nothing blocking the path from B to V1 either. So I'm going to draw that line as well. Nothing blocking the path from C to V1. So I'll line the two up so they line up on the edge of my ruler. And I'll connect that line. If I go from D to V1... If I were to connect D to V1, the problem is the line I would draw would go through my shape. And so that's not going to help me out at all. So I'm just going to leave it as is. So A, B, and C go to V1. It should look like a very long uh, box, perhaps like a stick of butter, an infinite stick of butter. And while I did everything correctly here, I'm not done because I have to show an end to that stick. And it's not practical for it to go on forever and ever and ever for this, uh, for this example. So I'm going to... Pick one of these lines that's going to, towards V1. And incidentally, these lines that go to V1 that show things get from larger to smaller are called orthogonal lines. I'm going to go from A to V1, and I'm going to stop somewhere arbitrarily. Maybe I'll stop there, because I want to cut my box off there. And now I have to do something called cut-offs. I have to cut the box off so it's not going on forever and ever. If the front of my box goes side to side or horizontally, the back of my box will do the same. It's going to go horizontally, side to side. And it'll do something like so. I need something over here because now it's an empty space. So if the front of my box along that end goes vertically or up and down, I'll do the same thing at the back of the box to make that go up and down. And I believe you should start seeing uh, a three-dimensional form where you see the top, the front, and the side. These extra lines were helpful at one point, but I no longer need them. So I'll erase those orthogonal lines. And then... The illusion should be more or less complete. I can do this in different spots. If I do a box that's now crossing the horizon line, so I'll draw one side of the box, the other side of the box, I'll draw the top of that shape and the bottom of that shape. And I will now uh, name that shape. We'll start off with the alphabet here where I left off E, F, G, and H. Now I'm tasked with trying to find out which corners go to V1. If I ask myself if E goes to V1, nothing blocking that path. So yes, E will get connected to V1 using my ruler. If I try to connect F with V1, you'll notice that I'm cutting through my original shape. So that's not going to count. I'm not going to need that. If I look at G, G also will cut through my original shape. So that's not helpful. So I won't do that one. H, however, will in fact go toward V1 uninterrupted, so I can draw that one. 
And if you have a little bit of imagination, this looks like maybe the front of a train, and this is the side of the train going on forever now. This infiniteness is something I actually want to make finite, so I'm going to decide to cut it off somewhere. My, dis my choice. Maybe I'll stop there. If the front of my box along this little corridor is going up and down, the back will go up and down or vertically as well. I should see the illusion of the box. And now I start looking for lines I can get rid of. These orthogonal lines on the side were helpful, but no longer needed. And I can now also get rid of the line that cuts through my building, what was the horizon line or eye level. I use the term building because I do, uh, the plan is to make these boxes at some point transform into objects and the objects and for the lesson will be uh, buildings. So I can see the front of the box and the side of the box. I can change the shape somewhat. And this time I'm going to put it above the horizon line. Just to experiment and play with this. And again, to continue the alphabet. I, J, K, and L. And if you were to help me try to figure out which corners go to V1, I would cut through my box, so that's a no. J does not cut through my box. I can go from J to V1 uninterrupted. You notice everything is going to V1. I have not moved V1. K goes in uninterrupted towards V1. And it looks like L goes uninterrupted to V1. Things are going to be skinny along this section, but nothing blocks the path of the line, the orthogonal line. So you should see now the start of this rectangular prism. And now we decide how far back the back end of the box goes. So I'm going to go somewhere. I'll stop somewhere arbitrarily, maybe here. If the front of the box goes vertically, the back of the box also goes vertically. If the front of the box goes horizontally on this section, the next section will go also horizontally, like so. And you just see a third rectangular prism. And again, I can erase these excess lines that I no longer need. Will be trimmed as orthogonal lines again. Something like that. Um, there's different forms of how this gets used. For example, uh, in some cases, I'll give you a box over here. By placing a box on the horizon line, uh, but more importantly, on the other side of this box. And in this case, I'm going to make it smaller. And uh, for the sake of the good habit of labeling, I'll call it M, N, O, and P. If I start looking at the corners that go to V1, this box is in the way. There is an un there is an interrupted path. If I were to go from N, N would normally go to V1. So I will still line it up with V1, but I might stop at the building and not draw further past it. P could also now go towards V1. Again, I'll stop at that side of the building. And I'm cutting through my original shape, so I don't draw that. And same thing with O. And it should look like there are two boxes alongside of each other with a space in between, almost like an alleyway. Uh, and I just chose to stop my lines here. But if I were to line up the ruler again, you could see that it does indeed line up with V1. So now there's some overlapping going on here. I can continue overlapping. I can actually start my next box on top of this one here, I'm going to make it a tall, skinny box, like so. And you're still following the, the general rule of thumb, which is asking yourself what goes to V1. I'm going to start continuing the, uh, the use of the alphabet. Q, R, S, and T. If we ask if Q goes to V1, the answer is yes. There's nothing blocking that path. Does R go to V1? No, I'm going to cut through my original shape. And if you look carefully at S over here, that goes over my previous shape. There's something blocking the back, so I can't draw that one. And same thing with T. I can't draw a line over to T because there are things blocking the way. So now I just skip right to the cutoff. I'm going to decide to cut it off somewhere, maybe over, over here. And I'll, if the cutoff, excuse me, if the front is vertical, the cutoff is also vertical. And you should see the appearance of another box that now either looks like it's behind the box, the this previous box, or it looks like it's stacked up on top. But these are some of the basics that you can have when you're working here. Um, I know this box is weird because it's flooring. Uh, 
I just want to show you an example where we might see the bottom of the box. If I wanted to make this not float, I might draw two lines coming from the bottom. And this is a nice little shortcut here. The cross horizon line. And I'll draw essentially the end of a cylinder, but drawing kind of a smile there and kind of a frown at the top. And it's kind of a tube that or a column that's holding up that box. So it's not floating mysteriously. But these are some of the rudiments for one point that you can practice. Uh, one point perspective is where it all begins. Uh, and there's a lot of good use here. It's a good way to get introduced to uh, some of the more advanced forms of, of perspective.